This is Tales of Swordfall. Episode 23, Ash and Smoke. Uh, roll me a history with advantage there. Okay. <coughs> oh. <laughs> nope. Let me whisper something. Okay. That was actually good timing on your part. Uh yeah, they're um <laughs> all screaming this stuff in draconic. Uh they're you know, making slashing motions at you. Uh they're saying that somebody's gonna eat your soul. Hmm. Um yeah, uh, Nort's kind of freaked out by it, this the, the sudden bombardment and uh, some uh, personal triggers for, for Nork and his past, but he's going to shout at them in, in Draconic, you know, never, you're, you, know, you dare attack my town and my family, you know, something epic he's gonna shout i can't yeah. think of a shout right now well, he's just gonna basically he's gonna he's gonna curse them out a bit yeah. and uh, as he starts attacking okay so um there are three kobolds mm -hmm. um and we'll say he first targets the one on the left oh um just an fyi flurry of blows can actually hit three different targets Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Just Yep, yep. Yep. So he's gonna first target the one on the left. Okay. And he's going to do an unarmed strike. Nice. Since he doesn't have a spear on him right now, because he was just cuffed, but he's okay with that. Oh, and also it was kinda like left in uh Gavin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if that was ever taken care of. But uh so yeah, the one on the left, he's going to unarmed strike, and that, that unfortunately, is a miss. A miss. Uh, I'm going to use um, Flurry of Blows. Okay. Spend one key point for that. Okay. To take two more unarmed strikes, targeting the one on the left again. That's definitely a hit. Okay. And going to do damage on that. Uh, come on. There we go. Okay. And also the open, ha open hand technique. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop you right there and say you yeah. just instantly killed that one. Okay. <laughs> well, then that one's, that, one's, that one's taken care of. And then my second attack at the one on the right. Okay. And bam. That's that's definitely a uh hit. <laughs> and bam. Okay. So uh what does it look like when you kill these two? <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. Um Nork uh, He uh let's see, how should you do this? Um Boing. He, let's say he did a, well, it's his first attack missed. Mm -hmm. So first he, he swung, or he thrust his fist forward towards the face of the one on the left, but it, it managed to dodge out of the way. But then from that, he jumped up and flipped around and brought his heel down right on top of its head and uh, just, just planted it in the ground. And then he used the uh, momentum from that to um, 
then hop back up and swipe his foot up right under the chin of the one on the right. And uh, just this, like, uppercut with a foot. Nice. Uh, so that was a flirt. And, and then he taunts the one in the middle <laughs> <laughs> by screaming at it. Just, ah! Let's see, where's that? Um, where is... Oh, intimidation. intimidation. There we go. Maybe it doesn't work so well because they're not, you know, they might be small, but Nork is also small. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to try to yell at you back. Uh, with worst results, actually, that's actually a four. Oh, geez. Yeah, so it, like, squeaks back. Oh, okay. Um, advantage. So that was your first <laughs> flurry of blows. That's a, um action there. Um. A full mm -hmm. action. Uh, don't you have an extra attack now? Um, I could take an extra attack. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, it is it is it is completely free for me to take an extra attack. Doesn't yeah. even cost key. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. I'm gonna look over. Let's see. I'm, I'm gonna use perception here to see how the other two who are right next to me are doing. Okay. Um. Let's see. Let's just say it's in uh, initiative order. And um, Ash and Tirker, are you bloodied yet? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Nearly, but no. <laughs> they look like they're holding their own right now. Okay. And, but you still have one guy on you. Yep, yep. And, uh... Let's see, I guess I'll just, uh, just do a straight attack. Another unarmed strike towards that one centered up on me. You, uh, crit. Okay, roll for damage, but I'm going to say right now, it's dead. <laughs> it's it's double dead. Okay, uh, what does this look like? Um, Nort thrusts his open palm straight, you know, kind of with the fingers curled, uh, straight at the kobold's face, and... Uh, Smashes its whole uh, top jaw right into its skull, <laughs> and uh, it kind of just instantly done. Ouch! Okay, yeah, you literally crum crumbled its its skull under his fist. Damn! There must be some giant potion still in ya. <laughs> A little bit. A little oh. after effect. Okay. Um. You're going to do anything else? Uh, any movement? And... Going to... Scoot on over to... Rayanne. Probably very close. And just be ready to start attacking... Uh, those that are around her. Awesome. Okay. I think that is your full turn. Ash! Actually gonna, oh. I'm going to say Nort's going to gonna, um, try to sneak around behind the ones that are attacking attacking Rayan. Yeah, it doesn't really matter at the moment. Doesn't because, matter. Yeah, they're all facing her. They're all at attention. And uh, if we were using miniatures or whatever, you'd be basically walking into their space, and that does not give them any kind of... Uh, you know, opportunities or anything. So, you're okay. fine. And, uh, yeah, now, now, Ash, you are surrounded by three kobolds who are making slashing motions toward you and shouting draconic. Cool. Uh, I had a real quick spacing question for you, Paul. Okay. Before I start casting willy-nilly here. <laughs> uh, how close are my allies to me? Um, you were arriving to this area, uh, kind of in an un, 
like in no, no formation and kind of in a blob. So like usually people walk within uh, you know arm's length, if not a little bit longer than that. So I'd say you know everybody's within five to ten feet Except of you. For Kirker, who's maybe fifteen feet away. Yeah, I mean, uh, unless he in, dashed backwards, basically. Yeah, unless anybody has something like, oh, my character's always always walks in the back, like a little behind everyone or in front of everyone. Uh, all right, that changes what I was planning to do a little bit. I uh, because the spell is going to cast the fifteen feet, the fifteen foot cube around me, but I think that might hit some allies. Yeah, I would, I would say it probably would hit at least like one or two of your allies. Uh, if there's three in front of me, could I cast a spell that's a cone shape and hit all of them? Yeah. All right. Uh, I will cast burning hands at these kobolds then. Uh. And it looks like they need to make a dexterity saving throw. That is correct. I'm in 3d6 on a failed save. Okay, so let's see how many you actually hit out of the three. So that's the first one. It um, actually does its save. Second one does not. <laughs> and it uh, looks like that matches, so it succeeds. Um, so what? It's uh, 3d6 on a failed save. Has half as much as a success. You, you probably have a good chance of killing these, so... Oh, there's nine. Okay, so one of his, them dead. I'm and... Them down. Yeah, and then... The other two are... Almost dead. Alright, uh... I will go ahead and action surge then. Okay. We'll finish these guys quickly, and uh... So, I'm gonna cast a cantrip called Green Flame Blade. Okay. Nice. Uh, so I make a weapon attack on one, and then I think uh, spellcasting ability modifier damage jumps to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That is one of the most awesome spells, in my opinion. I think it's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a sword attack? The 25 hits. Oh, is that the 25 there? Perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, 25 hits. You almost crit. Almost. <laughs> yeah, they're both dead. They only had one health point left, so perfect. So you can you out. can do more than one damage. Congratulations. Yay! All right, uh, I guess uh, that's about it for my turn then. Cool. And now it's for the robed cobalt. Hmm. What is it gonna do? Hmm. It's gonna like scan the scan you guys and look and um first kinda does a hand wavy thing and um looks directly at uh Mantis. And could you give me? No, I think it just does a hex, and you don't have to roll anything because that just gets placed on you. So, damn. And I was just trying to figure out what I was going to use to hit and wall of fire. <laughs> well, if I actually, I don't think uh, has that one. I hope not. It's a high level spell. <laughs> Just not Mantis. Anything but that. Ah, <laughs> uh, she's gonna attack Mantis totally. <laughs> or do something better. Um, did I did I mention? What stat uh, she was using, or going to uh, debuff on Mantis? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I might have mute myself before that. Uh, she's going to uh, give you disadvantage on wisdom things. Awesome. And then, since that was a bonus action, she's going to take her full action to 
Um, do that. Crowd of Madness. Which mm. you have to make uh, a... So, when she casts that, does she, like, make any sort of... Like, can I tell she's casting something? Uh, give me an Arcana check. 22? 22. Uh, you... You recognize... Uh, is that actually a part of the Warlock spells? I... Um... Current Madness, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean... That's that's good enough, anyways. Uh, yeah, you recognize kind of the the uh, hand gestures that need to happen with a crown of madness, and you know that she is definitely trying to cast it on you. Like she made uh, eye contact with Mantis, and right. just you had that like kung fu movie moment where like the camera zooms onto her eyes, and she's just like. I know that's my enemy. Right. Because of what my patron said. So I would be like, that's definitely like the one with the enemy. Yep. Uh, so, well, when I noticed that, uh, can I counter spell? Uh, is that a reaction? Yes. Then yes. It is one reaction. Uh, so, if it's casting a spell third level or lower, the spell fails and has no effect. And I think that's a second level spell. So uh, Yes, yes it is. And it looks like, according to all this stuff, uh, yeah, you succeed at blocking her devious plans. <laughs> Little mental wizard. Caster Damn. battle, warlock battle going on. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, I'm actually super happy that happened. Because that Me was cool. Too. <laughs> uh, Shut down. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Kalisa's turn. Um, <laughs> she knows she's got to bite something and someone. I uh, Would you like to take control? Oh, it's yes. all you. You okay. are chaos. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> If you want me to do the turn, she somehow gets right next to the caster, and then I shoot him because she's within five feet. Oh, well, she's but, uh... totally gonna just <laughs> go. She, yeah, she's totally gonna do that. No, she's gonna yeah. go after the ones that are like hitting mommy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I back up. She's like, doesn't back up with me. No, she's just like, you hurt mommy. I'm gonna kill ya. And she only mommy. has beak attacks right now. And somehow she hits. <laughs> and kills. Oh, jeez. Uh, so she's like, she just awesome. makes her little war cry noise. <laughs> and uh, jumps on this kobold, which is, <laughs> they're a little freaked out because there's like suddenly a little tiny owlbear just out of nowhere. And uh, starts mauling. Um mm. It's it, it would be cute if there wasn't a lot of blood. Uh, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's still cute. Tyrker just goes like, hmm. and, <laughs> and, and Norik's gonna peek over and and say, "Oh, Kalis is doing something useful." So, <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna check if this is shenanigans or not, because uh, I haven't played a rogue in a long time. So okay. is it shenanigansy for me to use part of my movement to move within the smoldering kobolds near Ash, use my Mask of the Wild as my cunning action to hide, and then shoot with my longbow from out of cover and hiding, depending on my stealth roll, to get that sneak attack damage potential on the caster? So I think mechanically how you're doing it is perfectly sound. Uh, but you're I using, don't... using your movement, don't... then you're using your cunning action, and then you're using your uh, uh, attack weapon action. attack. Yeah. Yes. And that logically makes sense. It is a little bullshitty, but it's it is... bull like if it... I was Jim, I'd be like, "Come on, really?" I... <laughs> you know, go for it. Why not? 
I mean, the worst it's... thing could happen is that you miss all of them and you gain attention. Let's see how how this stealth roll goes with the hide action. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Uh, somehow you disappear within that smoke. All right. Now let's see if I can actually hit. <laughs> All right. Uh, where is that? And out from behind, Ash. Natural oh, twenty. Oh, long natural road. twenty. Uh, yeah, I'm declaring that one dead right now. <laughs> the caster's dead. Um. Oh, the caster. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I was looking at normal kobolds. Now you will definitely have to roll the hit for that one. Oh man! So that many damage. That That's many a lot da of damage. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. <laughs> Holy crap! Oof. Okay, I need to calculate this. Not in my head. Gotta love having sneak attack crits. Yep. Uh, yeah, she ain't doing too well. And I gotta make a roll to see if she keeps her um, concentration. Break it. Please go. So she's gotta roll. I can't do maths right now. Um, no, like I don't think. Or above. Yeah, right. I don't think she can actually make that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Um. You feel some mystical energy dissipate off you, Mantis. And... I feel invigorated. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, that was a uh, bonus action. That was movement, yep. and that was an and attack. That seems then... like a full turn. Yep. With the rest of my turn, I'll just take... Uh, I'll move back again. So okay. I moved. I moved, like... 15 or 20, I'll say 20 feet to behind Ash, and then I'll move 15 feet back from Ash with the rest of the movement after that. Awesome. The 35s. Alright, and that's my turn. Ran, you are surrounded by three kobolds who are, you know, menacingly jabbing in the air toward you, and they have actually jabbed at you a couple times and hit. Yep, and I think I do have some... Well, a few spell slots left. So I want to do magic missile on all three of them if I can. Um yeah, I, I, I think you can actually hit multiple targets with magic missile. Uh let me double double check that. That's a classic spell. Yeah. That's a cantrip, isn't it? Uh, uh I think no. it's first level. No, first it's level. level. Yeah, but you can cast it at higher levels too. And it doesn't miss. Yep. The only way to really block it is like shield spell. <laughs> so you have to, yeah, you have to cast to not get hit by it. It's ridiculously awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, the a dart deals one d four plus one force damage to its target. Um, the darts all strike simultaneously. You can direct them to hit one creature or several. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you can uh, use a mouth all three on all three. So uh, let's just do this. Um... Oh, you got a three, you got a four, you got a three. Uh, did you cast that at level two? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. And um, unfortunately, you. Yeah, you do not have an ally within five feet, so you don't get the sneak attack damage, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you injured. So two four damage, damage, five damage, four damage. Yep, you then... kill kill one outright. The other Ooh. two are seriously damaged. So who gets that uh, fourth uh, missile? Okay, so. Just maybe say the one on the left. Alright, so you have only one cobalt on you. Yeah. And this brings us down to the very bottom of the round. Hooray. Yep. <laughs> Mantis, 
you are in the same situation as most of your allies, well, the ones that uh, are still surrounded. Three cobalts with daggers. They are just making stabbing motions towards you, screaming at you in Draconic. Uh, yeah, I am going to cast um, Armor of Agathis on myself. Uh, and since I'm a warlock, I have to do that at third level. Uh, so that's 15 temporary hit points. Nice. And, um, is that your full action? Any bonus actions or anything you would like to take? Uh, I don't believe there's anything else I can do. Alright. And I might have... Should have mentioned this earlier, but if you have, you guys are fifth, uh, fifth level adventurers, so I would expect to, you guys to at least have two normal healing potions on you. Okay. If that helps. <laughs> uh, it does. And using an item is a free action, if I remember correctly. Um, I am healing potions are usually a full action to drink, yeah. but. If you want to give that as a free action, I am so down. Well, it's either or at least a, as a bonus action. Yeah, it's either yeah. a bonus action or a free action. I always get these confused. So I'm going to go with a bonus action because, you know, action I'll economy. Use one as a bonus action. Sure, go ahead. Uh, so what do I roll for that? Uh, normal healing potions are. 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2. Mm -hmm. Looking at it right now. Wow. Wow, I that was a bad roll. Everything. <laughs> How and, can that this roll? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. Well, you can't get much worse than that, though. I mean, you literally, literally can't. can't. Yeah, this is yeah, as bad as, as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have tonight. Uh, we're going to stop it right there, just kind of in the middle of the action, where everybody's in mortal peril, because we love doing that. Um, and let's do our goodbyes. Uh, I'm Robin. I was playing the Dwarven Warlock Mantis tonight. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Call Me Caulfield. Caulfield is spelled C-A-U-L-F-I-E-L-D. Uh, I also have a podcast called the Call Me Caulfield Podcast, which is available on uh, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, uh, and Pocket Cast, as far as I know. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I'm Ammon, and I was playing Ash the uh, Eldritch Knight slash Wizard tonight. You can come hang out with me on Twitter at BND Geologist. Hey, I'm Getch Righteous. I was playing uh, Tukir Floki-san, the uh, rogue scout um, widow. Um, if you want to be... If you want more D&D &D stuff, um, you could go to bandofthehotgaming.com where we've got links to the other Tales of Swordfall videos as well as um, a game that Eludria hosts that Paul and I both play in called Heroes of Old. Um, that is a little more off the wall and we delicious um and that's live every uh friday at 8 p.m and there's a huge backlog of that um i also host a game um called bane of the ancients um you can find that on youtube at uh bane of D, &D as well as on the bane of the hot gaming.com website um and if you want to find out more about the stuff i'm into it's usually darker grittier geeky weeby types of things you can find me on uh you know, Twitter, Facebook, all those good things. It's Gats Righteous with uh, Gats with two T's. Um, and yeah, if you want to look at goodies and other awesome geeky YouTube video gamey D and D stuff, go check out Band of the Hot Gaming's YouTube and website. And I'm way too tired for this outro. <laughs> <laughs> and I am very Red the Butterfly, and I played Rayan, aka the Potion Hoarder. <laughs> And you can catch me at BRY RDM Butterfly or on YouTube, Very Random Butterfly. I post art, I do videos of very random things, 
and yeah, stuff like that, and do comics whenever I feel like it. And I'm Guy. I was playing uh, Norik Valspar, the uh, halfling monk who's he's, he's a little bit salty right now about the whole uh, potion being poured down his throat thing. But, you know, we're going to get through this fight. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Guy Who Can't Sing. Um, no apostrophe, all mushed together. And uh, on YouTube, that guy who can't sing. All mushed together, no apostrophe. And uh, yeah, I, I do some little derpy video things. And I uh, follow a gazillion animators, uh, YouTube animators on Twitter. And we post their stuff. And uh, yeah, we're all good friends. And I'm Paul. I was the guy running this game. Um, if you want to follow more stuff about Tales of Swordfall, that's what you're listening to right now. Uh, we're on Twitter at Swordfall D&D, the letters D&D. Um, also, we have a Facebook page, a Google Plus, Plus page. Uh, we put the stuff on YouTube, so if you're listening there, like, share, subscribe, share, comment share i don't know and uh also we have an anchor page which also posts to uh stitcher and uh a lot of other things that i can't remember at the moment but yeah if you're listening at any of the uh podcast websites um if you can uh subscribe to us follow us like us share it to your friends share it to your grandma your grandma might not appreciate this, but, you know, share it anyways. Uh, and that's all we really have for tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Robin. I mean, thanks. Yep. Thank you for uh, joining us, and um, I hope you guys have fun and, uh, you know, decide to continue with us. And uh, if you are listening to us, whatever time of day it is, I hope you're having a nice one. Bye-bye. 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 Don't touch strange things. No, never. That's weird stuff. Don't touch weird stuff. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Don't touch weird stuff. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Tales of Swordfall. Please consider listening to these podcasts. Welcome to a special episode of Where the Wild Things Roll. My name is John and I will be your host and DM for this 5th edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast set in the world of Ravarna. This podcast might be a tad different from others you've listened to. The two players will be my 12 year old son Kinnick and my 10 year old daughter Kaylee as they learn to play D&D through their very first campaign. We will pick up with our adventurers as they finish their time at Paduke's Adventurers Guild as they take their practical exams in Dungeoneering, Magical Beasts, Weapons and Armor, Puzzle Solving, Diplomacy, History of the World, and Magical Cause and Effect before they are set out into the world. Can our two adventurers pass their classes and become full-fledged members of the Adventurers Guild? You'll have to tune in and find out next time on Where the Wild Things Roll.
please like, share, comment, and subscribe.